Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. What I want to do in this video is show you an alternative way to determine the relationship between V in and V out for both an integrator and differentiator circuits like the ones you see here. And this analysis is a prelude to the analysis of more complicated circuits with multiple resistors and capacitors put together to make active filters. The idea that I'm going to use is that you can replace the resistors and capacitors in the circuits with generic impedances. So the input resistor on the integrator and the input capacitor on the differentiator become a generic input impedance. And the feedback capacitor on the integrator and the feedback resistor on the differentiator become a generic feedback impedance. To give a generic circuit that looks like this. I should note that these impedances could also just be resistors and that would make an inverting amplifier. The whole analysis that I'm going to do here can apply to all three of these circuits, integrator, differentiator, and straight inverting amplifier. And again, for this analysis, we are going to assume that this op amp is ideal, which means that no current goes into the inverting or non-inverting pins because the input impedance is infinite and the open loop gain is infinite. And so with the negative feedback, the voltages at the inverting terminal and the non-inverting terminal are the same. To do this alternative analysis, we are going to switch to the complex frequency domain. So instead of thinking about V in and V out as voltage signals that change over time, we are going to be analyzing them from the point of view as signals in the frequency domain. So V in, instead of being V in of T, becomes V in of S. And V out, instead of being V out of T, a signal that changes with time, it becomes V out of S. Don't worry though, the beauty of this switch is that we don't actually have to do any Laplace transforms. We can just say we're doing the switch and then use V in of S and V out of S instead of V in of T and V out of T when doing the calculations. You'll see what I mean in a sec. Then for the impedances, we can represent the components with their appropriate complex representation. R is just R, but for the capacitor, that can be represented as 1 over J omega C. But since we're doing this in the complex frequency domain, this J omega becomes S. So we can just represent the capacitor as 1 over SC. So now the analysis becomes really similar to what we've done with the inverting amplifier configuration. Because no current flows into the inverting terminal, we have this current here, let's call it I, I, and another current here, let's call it I, F. These are currents represented in the S domain. The current I, I, and the current I, F are equal to each other. I, I, that current, the input current, is V in over Z, I, which is equal to negative V out over ZF. Remember this right here is a virtual ground. So this point is at zero. So the voltage across ZI is V in and the voltage across ZF is negative V out. So rearranging this, doing a little bit of algebra to get an equation in terms of V out, we get V out is equal to negative ZF over ZI times V in. And this is just the generic form where we have some impedance at the input and some impedance in the feedback. If we apply this analysis to the differentiator, we have the Z in is made up of this capacitor. So that Z in now is one over SC and the Z feedback, the feedback resistance or the feedback impedance, I should say, is simply R or RFB. So what we get when we substitute those two numbers into our expression for V out here, we get RFB over 1 over SC, there's my ZF and there's my ZI, times V in of S, which is equal to SCR, I guess that's CI, isn't it? FB times V in of S. We're almost there. And remember, I did say we would not do any Laplace transformations. But to figure out what this equation means in the time domain, we're going to have to do an inverse Laplace transformation. But don't worry, it's a really easy one. The transform that we want to use says that the inverse Laplace transform of S times some function in the S domain plus the initial value in the time domain is equal to the derivative of the function in the time domain. And since this f of t, and since this f of t is sinusoidal, we can say that this is equal to zero. So to convert this expression into the time domain, that inverse Laplace transform is going to take the time derivative of V in times these two values, which are a constant. Which shows you by a different approach why this circuit is a differentiator. Now let's do the same thing for the integrator circuit. 
for the integrator, the input impedance is simply this R value. And the feedback impedance, since it is a capacitor, this is 1 over SC. So this V out in the S domain is negative 1 over SC FB over R times V in. And I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over R CFB. I guess this is RI, isn't it? Times 1 over S times V in of S. Now again, I'm going to have to apply an inverse Laplace transformation but also again, this is a very easy one. The transform that we will use this time says that the inverse transform of one over S times some function in the S domain is equal to the integral over time of the function in the time domain. And another way to look at it is that this one over S parameter indicates an integral in the time domain. So going back to here, we've got one over S times a function in the S domain times a constant. So when I do the inverse Laplace transform, I will get that constant out front times the integral of the function in the time domain. So there you can see why this circuit is called an integrator. All right, as a little bit of a bonus, since we are analyzing both integrators and differentiators in this video, I've built a circuit that has an integrator followed by a differentiator, just to see what happens when you integrate a signal and then you differentiate the signal. I have created a pulse input here that is a square wave pulse with a 50% duty cycle and a period of 0.2 milliseconds. Going through this integrator and then through this differentiator. Now let's take a look at these signals. So there's my input. I've got a square wave with that frequency of 5 kilohertz or 0.2 millisecond period. When I integrate it, I get this triangle wave. And based on the R and the C values, it has a positive peak of 1 volt and a negative peak of minus 1 volt. And then I take that and I pass it back through a differentiator. We got a lot of overshoot there at the beginning, so I'll change the scale of this graph. You can see it a little bit better. And I get back the square wave. There is a little bit of ringing on the square wave transitions, but I could reduce that high frequency ringing by using a better filter in the feedback. So in this video, I've given you an alternative approach to analyzing the integrator and differentiator op-amp circuits and give you a bit of a preview of how to analyze more complicated op-amp circuits with multiple resistors and capacitors at the input and in the feedback. As I'm sure you can imagine, ZI and ZF that you see here don't have to be a single component. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.